may have a motion and a second to approve the consent calendar. I'll make a motion. Second. Madam Clerk, please take vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, motion passes unanimously. Okay, so staff, please present the report. Okay, so this um, evening what I'm presenting and what I attached is the 2023-2024 revenue and expenditure report. Um, so this is a year that we just finished in last year in June. Um, these are unaudited um, financials, and so we'll have the audit, the financials um, sometime in uh, February, likely. Um, and if there are any significant differences, we can update the report. Um, and just to, um, we were talking before we started the meeting, I was talking to, um, about the fact that we, um, the, the, the committee, the, the committee has done a great job approving the last time we met in March, um, the budget was approved for this fiscal year that we're in, um, which is 24-25. And then um, once we close out the year, we'll be looking at actuals again for this fiscal year. Um, the next, um, probably the next two meetings, uh, what I would recommend is the, com the focus would be on preparing for the next two-year budget, which we typically present to council in May. And so that would be 25, 26, and 26, 27. So just kind of st starting to brainstorm on projects and activities um, that um, we can include in the Measure U or, or expenditures with Measure U revenue. Um, and again, this report is um, 2024. It's not audited, but again, I don't expect a lot of changes uh, once uh, the numbers are audited, but we'll present the the final one uh, sometime next year. And can I ask a question? Sure. Okay, so um, the, our next task is to deal with um, projections, not reality, right? I mean, so we're going to get what, what projected budgets, projected tax. And we'll work off that. Yes, because we've already, the committee has uh, already approved the budget for this fiscal year, right? So it makes sense that we're closing out 2024. So it makes sense to focus on like the, the future years, which are the next two years. Um, the next meeting is in December. Um, and then the following meeting will likely be sometime in March to be a, a perfect time to f sort of finalize that budget so that we can take it or the committee can take it to council before they approve the city budget and we can include it in the city budget. Yeah. Okay. Uh, for fiscal year 2024, the measure U revenues were uh, $3.2 million, so just under 3.3. And this is a summary of revenues and expenditures. And then the expenditures uh, for public safety uh, were 2.2 million streets and maintenance, 640,000, and parks and recreation, 386,000. Um, so total expenditures total 3.291, which equal the 3.291 in revenue that was generated in 2024. And so I'll go into more details for each one of the different um, expenditures. Can I ask a question about revenue before you get? Mm -hmm. um, was this, I don't recall if we talked about this before, was this, um, was this on target for what was um, anticipated? Um, was the projection? We were actually a little bit higher. Um, we get our projections from HDL, so from the initial projected revenue, um, we started seeing increases, but then those actually did slow down towards the end of the year. Um, so I'll have to take a look at to see what the last projection that we had from uh, for um, revenue, uh, because they have, so this, our sales taxes overall have started to um, slow down a little bit in, in certain areas, uh, like online sales. Um, restaurants and hotels are still pretty strong. Uh, the automobile industry slowing down, cars, with, because of interest rates and credit card rates. Okay. 
For public safety, this, uh, this is a detail of the $2.2 million. So we have uh, one police sergeant, and this is everything included. So this is salaries, benefits, um, all associated benefits, and then overtime. We have three senior police officers, uh, and we have one uh, police officer. Um, and then down below, we have a communications um, officer and two dispatchers. The CAD system, that's $4,000. That's just the software update uh, upgrade. Uh, and then we have various equipment. So that's a, a total of $132,000 is different types of equipment that were purchased in the year. Tasers, uh, crash data recorder, bola wraps, speed detector, and just other miscellaneous equipment. What's a bola wrap? That's a good question. <laughs> before, so we I mean. had the flock cameras last time. The bola wrap is a form of um, taser, but it's like a, a form of, uh, of a taser, but a more advanced okay. where, um, at least my understanding, right, Angela, we looked it up. It's more like a, a safer way to... Um, to yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what my goal <laughs> Um, and then we had PD motorcycles, sixty-one hundred and twenty-five dollars. Is that to purchase the motor the bicycles, or is that? Yes, that's the purchase of the bicycles. Um, we had some already, right? And they're just cycling. Bicycles. I think we did. Yeah. Because yeah, they already had they had a bicycle. I mean, yeah, they had, I think they had some left over. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, the next. A line item is investigations, so anything related, evidence, supplies, uh, safety supplies, software, um, investigation services. That was a flock camera that we, that we had also had last year. Uh, it's $46,000. Uh, firearms, weapons, 35000 And then the cross guards, we had talked about it last time. The total amount is like 90 some thousand, but we get reimbursed 50%. Um, so that's the 50% the that we do not get reimbursement for. And who, who do we get the other half from? We get uh, reimbursed from the county. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, uniform expenses and, you know, reimbursements to uh, PD officers. Um, that's that $41,769. Uh, we did purchase a motorcycle last year. So we'll have another motorcycle coming in this year. Uh, but we have one that was purchased in this fiscal year, so that's that thirty-six thousand. And then um, just the, and then the next line item, the last one line item is the vehicle. So those are all the lease patrol vehicles that we have on lease that we pay um, on a monthly basis. Is that electric? I don't know that they're elect electric. I don't. I don't know. I don't think so. No. Yeah, we rent from Enterprise. Um, So when this uh, material is purchased and it goes into inventory, who manages that inventory? Because I know we don't have a police station yet, but where is the locker? Where's the storeroom where we can account for this a year from now? If we did an audit mm -hmm. that I could find two motorcycles from the police department, or where, where is that at? So for the motorcycles, because of those we own, we have a fixed asset ledger that we keep, uh, we track all of the capital assets for the city. Um, the lease equipment, we lease it from Enterprise, so they provide us with the schedule of all the cars that are leased. Um, and then any new any cars that we turn in and new ones that we lease. So we have a lease schedule with, from Enterprise. Uh, but for any fixed asset, we have we inventory that. Because some of this uh, equipment should be capital equipment. I would think that you would monitor that also. It, yeah, anything over $5,000, we capitalize, and we put it on our fixed asset ledgers. Okay. Anything under is, is like miscellaneous equipment supplies that, yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd like to make a comment here. Um, we're spending about 70% of, of these funds on the police department this year. Uh, and I think the money's been well spent. We have uh, 
they made dramatic improvements in the, the traffic stuff, the driving. I, I, well, you don't notice something when it's not there. And what I realized was I'm not noticing these loud muscle cars mm -hmm. with their mufflers screaming and running all over the place. Mm -hmm. right? uh, that, that's kind of stopped. Or they don't come into Wainini anymore. And uh, that, that is remarkable. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, you still got the donuts going. Uh, but uh, and, and we can't put those speed bumps everywhere. But um, at least I stopped down there, and I, apparently they just passed a law uh, this week where they'll just start confiscating people's cars. So if you get caught doing that, or if you're part of the public who is there watching it, they'll mm -hmm. grab your car and impound it now. So and wow. sell it. So uh, that yeah. might help us. Hopefully that helps. Yeah. That should help. So I'm, I'm yeah. you know, we, that's that's a big chunk, but. Uh, we'll get we'll get to the parks later, but we we also put a huge chunk into the parks last year. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, 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 all our reserve funds, and uh, it, it looks kind of puny here. But when you add in what is it, two million dollars? Or yes, it was over two that we that was allocated to the Bubbling Springs Park. Yeah, so that's I mean, you can't say the parks are underfunded. Or, yeah. No, absolutely, and that's why you'll see. I'll go through parks are less this year because of the Bubbling Springs Park. That's the large the, the large project. So the next um, category is the streets and maintenance. So we have, uh, under that category, we have uh, facility staff and street staff that wor uh, are uh, working on cleaning uh, city parks, the pier, a lot of uh, removal of graffiti. So a lot of that is in um, that first line item, $106,000. That's one uh, full-time staff. And um, it's actually an equivalent of, of one staff. We have five staff that are allocated um, to the Measure U because they all do the same thing, but it's about 20% each. Uh, street maintenance supplies. We have equipment rental, concrete, miscellaneous supplies at 71000 And then we have street staff um, equivalent of 2.25 uh, full-time equivalents. Uh, the staff are maintaining the streets, the alleys, the sidewalks, uh, public right-of-ways, and parking lots, and that's a total of $200,000. And then uh, streets, uh, small tools and equipment, uh, $12,000. Uh, facility streets and line, landscape vehicles, that's the same. Those are the least uh, vehicles for uh, facilities and streets, that's $69,000. And then uh, there's one capital equipment, equipment that we purchased that was a battery backup system. That was $9,000. Uh, landscape, small equipment. Can I, can I stop for a second? What, what does that back up? What? Is that street lights or is that? Um, Emergency. Uh, I'll have to look at the detail to give you exactly what it is. Do you mind looking it up, Angela? Um, we'll look it up. Mm -hmm. Uh, the next category is small equipment. So that's just small equipment, doesn't get capitalized, like chainsaws, uh, backpack blowers. That's under $3,000. And then we have um, reimbursement for staff, facilities, uh, uniforms, uh, almost $4,500. And uh, maintenance of uh, facilities, building maintenance, safety, small Appliances, supplies, 73000 um, And then the next category is property maintenance. And that's a lot of it is maintaining, like the community center, uh, the beach flags, the pier bathrooms, uh, $82,000. And then the last category is we purchased the fire pit at the beach, another one. Um, that was $8,000. So that was um, a total of $640,000 um, under streets and maintenance. I don't know if you're able to. Those fire pits are really being used. What? Those fire pits are really being oh, utilized. Are. Mm -hmm. Somebody used to just go and dig a hole and like burn pallets down there. Yeah. Yeah. Now you got a place to do it. Mm -hmm. So it's really nice. And uh, they have a fire pit where they have a. Yeah. Place for throwing you know, charcoal or that's important. nails or that's whatever. A, that's a good idea. Yeah. So it's turned out 
It's a battery backup for a generator is what it is. But that, the, the purpose of it, I'm guessing, is for electric emergency services. Well, that should be under police then, probably. I just, yeah, I don't know what the backup system, what its mm -hmm. purpose is. Discrete capital streets. For street yeah, it is for street. I would have to um, do a little bit more research on. Um, There's some signs now that we have on the street that uh, ran off of solar, and they have a battery backup for the solar. Yeah. Have you noticed um, them right across from yeah, the I think area? it's different battery backup for um, generators. There must be a generator that they facilities uses. Um, but I'll I'll oh, get more details. Oh, that might be that might be for the. Generators that failed during uh, the, the storm. I don't know. Yeah, I'll have to get more details, but I can do that and get back to you on that. And then the last um, category, which is the parks and recreation, which um, uh, in the past we've had a lot more um, capital, but now it's it it's all the Bubbling Spring, a lot of it is Bubbling Springs, so for 2024, and I'm sure we'll have a lot more next year, um, the amounts that were uh, that were paid by Measure U, the, the, the projects were the recreation coordinator, and again, these are salaries and benefits, um, the recreation and ocean safety supervisor, and then all the recreation special events, the touch a truck event, um, Easter events, so all of the re, uh, recreation events um, are $54,000. The museum supplies, $13,000. Recreation vehicles, again, is the lease vehicles for rec, uh, almost $21,000. The um, gym with the Boys and Girls Club, $7,400. I don't know if you saw or not, but we lost a porta pop potty at the Museum and got burnt down. Did you see that? I I did hear about it. Yeah, Frank, that burned down. Yeah, the, yeah. the town had donated it to us, twenty six hundred dollars yeah. worth, and uh, we don't know homeless kids, whatever. They threw a bunch yeah. of firecrackers, firecrackers, and fire um, launchers in, inside the little port at the top, and it caught fire and and just melted down the ground. Wow. Caused some damage to the building, but not a lot. Thank, yeah. thank goodness, but it could have taken down the building. So we'll rethink porta potties in the future. Where, where, where was this? When, when was this? Uh, two, two months ago mm -hmm. at the museum. Mm -hmm. yes, but it was just sad that yes, we had the sir. town donate that to us, mm -hmm. and then we, we lost it. Mm -hmm. so. And that was, that's what made us 88. ADB, what is it? ADA yeah. compliant. ADA compliant. Okay. Um, so um, just going back to the Parks and Rec, uh, we also have um, Senior Exercise Program. We have the Junior Lifeguard Program Expenses, um, $4,300. And then the Beach Portable Restroom Trailer Rental, um, almost $7,000. So that's... $386,000 that um, was um, spent on uh, Parks and Rec in, in 2024. And I think we have an, uh, more explanation for the battery backup. It's for traffic signals. So it's oh, a battery good. backup. Okay. So that was, I think, you had mentioned that, right? Yeah, and those yeah. things go out. It's a nightmare. Yeah. 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 Thank you. <laughs> uh, that's money well spent. Yeah. Okay. So you know, when I see that beach portable restroom trailer rental for seven thousand dollars, we can get these porta potties for twenty six hundred dollars. I think it's so females can change separately for males when uh, the the lifeguard. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah, I think. Can we get some clarification on the? Um, 
trailer um, at the beach, the por uh, portable, portable restaurant trailer. Yeah, I, I, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Charles. <laughs> It's it on. is on. Um, Chair, your description was uh, on the mark. Um, it is a rental over the summer to accompany the Ocean Lifeguard Program, uh, and it is to ensure that both male and female uh, members of the staff have the opportunity uh, to both change and use uh, the facilities. Let's so that has a cipher lock on the outside of it, and so only one person can go in there at a time? Is that the idea? Uh, separate facilities. I see. Uh, one for male, one for female. Are, are, are male and female both in that trailer, or, or do males use the... You know, it's changed over time, and I can't remember most recently the unit uh, that we've acquired. Um, I believe, um, I believe that trailer is just for uh, female staff. Okay. Uh, in the existing uh, permanent facility, is what the uh, male staff. I believe that's currently the situation. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank Good. You. Thanks very much. Thanks. Thank you. And with that, that is the, um, those are the expenditures for fiscal year 2024. Um, are there any other questions? Uh, since I'm on the museum uh, committee, I'm always wanting to make sure that, uh, you know, we're out of porta potty, okay? So as we look forward for funds in the future, I'm hoping that we are not. Can, can you hear him? You can hear me okay? Um, you might want to turn it on because I think I, I, I have know. it on. Oh, you have it on. Nice. Okay. <laughs> Anyhow, um, it's just that um, I know the city is going to have to spend some money for us again, and so it's, it's worthwhile to keep the museum up so we can be uh, compliant. Right. We have a bathroom inside the building, but it's, um, it doesn't meet the standards that's required now. So that might be something that we can include in the future budget. In the, in the budget. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, Charles would know better than I, but I think it was around $2,600 for that mm -hmm. porta potty, which was just a horrible thing to see vaporized out there, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so that's a great point. We can always start a list for discussion for, for budget. Yeah. Yeah. Just for the, the committee and for the public's uh, notification, I'll uh, confirm that uh, you were pretty, pretty very uh, close uh, committee member. It was uh, just under $3,000 was the purchase of the unit. Uh, we are concerned that the replacement, um, if we just did uh, the same type of unit in the same location without any additional security measures, could be, uh, end up at the same fate uh, that the initial one did. So we're looking at di different options. Um, you're absolutely correct. The w existing one does not meet uh, the ADA requirements. It is not a compliant. Um, so if we were to have a public restroom at that facility, uh, we would need to come up with a different solution. We're not required to have um, a public restroom at that facility, and at this time, it's our intent to provide information to visitors uh, about other public restrooms um, in the general area. There's none immediately adjacent, but the, the beach uh, being not too far away uh, would be one option. But in the future, if we are going to have a restroom at that location, uh, we'd have to come up with a more permanent solution. You know, we're thinking about children because we're going to have children coming in there soon, and you can't tell them to go down the beach. It's going to be too late. So there's that building, that land we own right across the street from the museum. I know they're going to build something there eventually, and when they do, maybe they can give us a shared bathroom with them. So, Do you know what they're getting ready to do over there, Charles? I don't, uh, don't have any specific information about final plans Great, at this time. Thanks. Okay, are there any public comments about what we've discussed? No public comments. Okay. Does the committee have any other comments? Um, I, I'd, I'd simply like to say, kind of repeat what I said before. Um, it, this part of the budget doesn't show a lot towards Parks and Rec, mm -hmm. but uh, since we threw in two plus million dollars in December, I think we're. <laughs> I think we're, we're, we're sitting pretty here, so um, in, in future um, budgets, I'd like to see a little bit more added to Parks and Rec. But. And we will do that because that was the um, unused 
portion of the previous years of Measure U revenues that were allocated to Bubbling Springs. So as we continue to spend money on Bubbling Springs, um, we will bring forth a report that includes all of the expenditures for Bowling Springs. That's a very good point. So we'll do that for um, the next meeting in December. And they'll do the, the maintenance and everything in the debate ball field too, and the snack bar or whatever, that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. I, th I think the Little League takes that over. Oh, do they? Yeah, do they I think take so. care of all that? Well, they get, they get the money out of the snack bar and they use that to they take care of the fields, I think. But there's always there's going to be maintenance at that park mm -hmm. for feeding and everything mm -hmm. else. So. Yeah. yeah. I had heard that Bubbling Springs was a little short for the money we needed. I don't, I don't know. Did we find all the money we needed on our, on our side after those grants that we got from we the government? We have the grant, and then there were funds that were appropriated from the general fund unassigned um, so to com to to for the it? estimated cost of the project. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Yeah, but we have spent money thus far, and there was an allocation from Measure U um, that the committee made on those unused funds. So we'll bring a report that shows that allocation and then how much we spent to date on for the next okay. meeting. Right. We'll put that, that together. That, that brought us up to being able to pay for it based on what the numbers were mm -hmm. in December. I don't know. Where we are now, but we, we we were fully funded at that point. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had a, um, allocated all of the Measure U revenues through fiscal year twenty twenty three. Correct. Okay. Okay. Uh, do we have a recommendation to accept the fiscal year to twenty twenty three twenty twenty four Measure U revenue and expense report as recommended? We have a motion. I'll make a recommendation. A second. Second. Okay. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Okay. All opposed. None. Motion passes unanimously. Okay. So I think we are ending this meeting at five thirty. Do you need a motion from the floor to close? Do you need a motion for that? No. Okay. Good. <laughs> I'll use this. Right. Thank you. Great. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for setting up and getting this all prepared for us. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you, guys.